Hello and welcome to the Zout Systems Developer Advaco C Team video. My name is Jay Santos and today we'll talk about cascading combo boxes. So let's get started. As always, make sure to subscribe to our Systems channel on YouTube and check the Advocacy Team Hints and How To's playlist for more videos that will speed up your Out Systems development even further. In this demo, we'll be using the Northwind database available on the Forge. This is a great tool to help you test and experiment with a properly populated relational database. And we'll be using three entities of the Northwind database, product, category, and supplier. As you can see in the data model, a category can have many products and a supplier can supply many products as well. We already have a scene set up with three combo boxes, one for suppliers, one for category, and one for the product. And we also have a preparation setup. Nothing too complex on the preparation. We have three aggregates and an if, and the if will enable and disable the product combo boxes, combo box, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and, and the aggregates are pretty straightforward. So we have an aggregate to get the categories, we have an aggregate to get the suppliers, and we have an aggregate that will get product information. The third aggregate have the product entity joined with the categories and supplier entities by the category and supplier IDs. It also have uh, a couple of filters based on the supplier ID and category ID variables. And we're going to talk about these variables in a moment. And this aggregate is sorted by product name in ascending order. Uh, this way, we can have the list of products in a nice alphabetical order and the categories and the suppliers are also sorted by category and supplier names as well. Now let's have a look at how the combo boxes are set up on our screen. So each of the combo boxes have their uh, respective supplier, category, and product uh, record list, and the respective uh, names as attributes. So for the supplier, we have supplier.company name. For category, we have category.category .category name. Product is slightly different because if we go back to the product aggregate, I have added a uh, an extra attribute that is, let me edit it, that is just adding the product name followed by a dash, category name followed by a dash, and the supplier name. This will make it easier to show to you uh, when we make any changes on our screen. So the way that we want this to work is that once we select a supplier and or a category, we will refresh the product combo box. So it will show only the products available on this category and or by this supplier. This is why the supplier and the category uh, combo boxes have the special option, all categories and all suppliers. Uh, these options are added to the special list. They have a value of minus one to ensure that they will not conflict with any of the aggregates IDs. If by any chance the category and the products I select return zero products, I'll simply disable the product combo list. So if I go back to preparation, I have here an if that checks uh, the length of the aggregate that gets my products. If it is bigger than zero, I set this Boolean local parameter to true. If it is equal zero, I set it to false. And if I go back to my screen, I can see that my product combo box, the enable parameter is attached to the product combo enable local parameter. One detail I forgot to mention is that each one of the combo boxes, besides the record list and the attribute that is shown on the combo box, they also have a variable 
that stores the ID of the item I selected. So I have here a local parameter product ID, a supplier ID, and a category ID. But of course, since we haven't added any logic yet to our page besides the preparation, let's see how it is behaving on the browser. So let's publish it. There you go. So when I open my page now, I have here the full list of products in my database. And as you can see, uh, I have the name of the product, dash, the category, so meat slash poultry, and finally the supplier, Pavlova LTD. So if I select one uh, supplier, let's select one I can actually speak the name, like exotic liquids, I have not updated the list. So I'm still showing the exact list of products. If I select a category like condiments, it's still the exact same list. So now let's start by building uh, the screen action that will implement this behavior. So each one of the combo boxes have a non-change event that happens when I change the value selected in the combo box. So this is the event that will trigger our screen action. So I'm going to uh, select here my supplier combo box. I'm going to click on the drop down for destination. I'm going to create a new screen action. And there you go. So it created a screen action called on supplier combo box change. Now the first thing I need to do on this screen action is add a refresh data that will update my get products with categories and suppliers uh, aggregate. So I'm going to select it. And if I have a look here at my aggregate on the filters, I have that my supplier ID should be either null identifier or uh, the supplier ID of the entity should be equal to the supplier ID variable. If I jump back real quick to the screen, and just as a reminder, uh, remember that our supplier combo box is associated with supplier ID variable, meaning that uh, this variable will receive the ID value of whatever item I select on this combo box. And getting back to the aggregate, the null identifier value that's because when I select a special list value, so if I select all suppliers, my variable, my supplier ID variable, will receive the null identifier uh, value. So that's why I'm. So that's why that filter is either the value of the ID or null identifier. So let's get back to our uh, screen action. After I done the refresh, I'm gonna check if my updated aggregate. So here's my, if my updated aggregate list is empty. If the list is empty, I will once again disable the product uh, combo box. If it, if, it, if it is not empty, I'll keep it enabled. So uh, I'm going to set an assign here to set the variable product combo enabled to true. So if the list is not empty, I enable the product combo box. Otherwise, let's put the false here, the true here, and over here, I assign the product combo enabled to false. So if, if the list is empty, the combo box is disabled. If the list is, is, is not empty, the combo box is enabled. And finally, one last item is the Ajax refresh of our product combo box. So it can reflect the changes, the changes made by the aggregate refresh. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So now I go back to my combo box screen. I have my supplier combo box with the on change uh, set. And since I want to have the exact same behavior for my category combo box, I can simply go to my category combo box and set the on change to the exact same screen action. Since we're using that same action on both uh, combo boxes, let's just change the name 
to a more generic on combo box change. Now let's see that in action. So here I have my screen again, and once again I have all the products here. Now if I select a supplier, let's say once again exotic liquids, you can see that now my product list is updated with only the products supplied by exotic liquids, which are these three here. I have a couple of beverages and a condiment. So if I select the category beverages, once again, my product list was updated. If I select condiments, once again, updated to the only condiment. What happens if I select meat and poultry? The product list is disabled. Now, if I, instead of exotic liquid, select all suppliers, once again, updated with all the meat and poultry uh, products provided by all uh, by all suppliers. So I have meat and, meat and poultry from Pavlova, from Tokyo Traders, from Good Day Mate, Mamezon, and that's it. I'm not going to say this German name. I'm going to try Plutzer, Leben, Lebensmittel, Großmacht. There you go. That's, that's, that's the extension of my German. So now I have here my cascading, uh, my cascading combo boxes up and running. So that's it. I hope it was interesting and useful. I want to thank you again for your time. My name is Jay Santos. My email is j.santos at outsystems.com. And I'm on Twitter at joutsystems. Feel free to reach me if you have any questions, if you want to know more about OutSystems. And also if you have suggestions about videos for, for us to create for you. We're always looking for ideas of content and, and features that you like to see here. So thank you very much, and I see you in the next video.